All right, guys, this is going to be video two of Seashore Santa. Um, we are going to be doing steps 14 through 26. They're actually pretty simple. It's mostly just like a few big pieces, his face. I'm going to show you guys how to do some French knots and um, basically just sewing some things on really at this point. Um, so the first part of the tutorial, we are going to be adding piece 14 onto uh, the stocking. This is going to be like the little pom-pom of his hat. Step 14 basically says to applique and um, embroider it. We've already embroidered it, which I did before the tutorial. This one's a little bit easier. I don't really think we're going to need to stitch it down because we can just hold it here with our fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and applique this on. I did want to point out here too that when I do sew, um, sew on pieces that have kind of like these indentions in them, these corners almost, like how it comes in on the seashell, I normally put a stitch in there, like in those corners, uh, mostly so I can kind of leave this open and you can't really see a stitch. It has a certain way of kind of defining the shape of the piece and keeping um, the embellishments a little bit easier to read. So now with 15, we are gonna sequin an applique and stuff the hat to the stocking. This is gonna be piece 15. This is his hat. I think I probably will use a pin on this one just to keep him in place. And let me grab some of my polyfill. My five pound box just came in. All right, I got it on there. Looks good to me. I'm probably gonna stitch this way so that way I can get some into the corner and then finish stitching around. All right, so we got his hat on. It's stuffed. So we're gonna move quickly into 16, which is embroider, sequence stuff, and applique the beard, 16, to the stocking. So I have already sequined and appliqued his beard. It's going to be light blue, and this is gonna be just the regular white sequence, which I use the long distance um, sequin technique that I've shown you before um, with just doing the sequence on his beard. So I'm gonna trim off a little bit of this black that's around here on his beard. It's so weird for some reason, those black lines seem to really wanna hug on um, to the white felt a lot more than the other felt. It's really strange, but it's actually easier to get off on the white felt than it is on the other ones. So I'm just gonna be really careful about how I line this up um, since it's gonna be covering a lot of the black lines that are left on the front. So I'm just gonna make sure that I do the bottom first. Well, there's not really a bottom, so I'm gonna cover up what we need to cover up here and then go by the sides. And like this line, this is gonna be covered up by the cuff and the face. So if it's a little off, it's not gonna be too much of an issue. But I am really gonna pin this part down because there's a lot of different things that it kind of covers and goes over. Um, it looks like this is gonna go right there. And I used my, my picture on there to kind of figure out where 
these little spots are going to be sewn down as well. I am going to end up covering up a sequin, but that's okay. Sometimes that is going to happen depending on kind of like where your pieces lay. Now we have the beard on and it's all stuffed very nice. Uh, the next thing that we are going to do is we are actually gonna put the face on. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side because I am gonna be showing you how to put the blush on and how to do the French knots for his eyes. So now we are going to do the French knots of the eyes. So I've already got my white string. I put it on a beading needle. Um, I like doing beetle needle, beading needles because it's almost like for a daintier knot, almost. So I'm going to go and find the spot that I like to put the pupil. I'm going to go up. I'm going to go one, two, three times around my needle. back down into the same spot and I'm going to pull that thread all the way down at the end of my needle. Do you see how I, I have it? And now I have it like pinned almost that piece of felt and I'm going to pull it all the way through into that eye. Don't worry, we're going to do another one. So now we're going to go over to this side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go up where I want it, the pupil to be, pull it, just make sure you don't pull it closed. Now, now that I have that, I like going down kind of at the end when I roll it because it just makes it easier to pull it down to the end of the needle. So one, two, three, you don't have to do it three times. I just have always done it three times. I like how much kind of um, pop it gives it. Now I'm gonna pull to the end of the needle. I have it through my felt. Pull to the end of the needle. Hold it tight with my thumb. And I'm gonna pull the whole rep very slowly to make sure it doesn't get knot or snagged. Pull the whole thing down through the eye. And there's our Santa face. Looks awesome. Practice your knots. It's taken me a really long time, and actually, my sister was the one that helped me and showed me how she did her French knots, which is the way that I just showed you. Um, it helps me a lot. It's a lot easier. Um, and they always turn out really good. When in doubt, rip it out. If it doesn't look good, you don't like it, cut it off. Start over. Be gentle, because especially on a satin stitch, be careful, but... You're going to want it to look a certain way, and if you don't, you're going to be upset about it. So just rip it out. So now I'm going to show you how I do my cheeks. Um, it says to use blush on cheeks, which you can really use any kind of blush. I like to use, it's kind of like a wet blush almost. I, I don't really know how to explain it. But so the last one did not record very well with putting the blush on. Um, but what I basically wanted to just show you guys is that I use a Q-tip on one side and I don't put any on the other. And I basically just.
So then I just take the white end and I just kind of like blot away any extra so it doesn't smear later. And that's how I put the blush on. So let's go ahead and put it on this stocking. We're gonna put our face on here. It doesn't say to stuff it, but I actually might just put a little bit of stuffing on the inside. Um, ooh, my table, my table, ooh, my table. Um, you can actually see it better, can't you? Um, I'm actually going to put a little stuffing in there um, just because this top part right here kind of sinks because of the beard. Uh, I'm not going to pin it only because, I don't know, I'm just, I just don't want to put a pinhole in his face. So I'm going to very carefully just kind of keep my fingers where, um, you know, I need him to stay. I do see a little, there's a little piece of black. There we go. So I'm going to hold it very carefully. I'm going to make sure to keep my hands off the blush because for any reason, if I missed anything, I don't want to smear it. So I'm just going to line his face up. He looks like a Santa Claus. That's so exciting. There's something that like totally happens when you start putting faces on and hands on. It totally just makes it into like, oh my gosh, it's really happening. <laughs> We're getting somewhere. All right, so our next step is going to be to sequin and stuff the hat trim, which is going to be this right here. All these little numbers on top, these are gonna be his eyebrows. Um, these are gonna be two seashells, which are gonna come in the next tutorial. These are going to be um, little stars that are in the next tutorial. So we'll cover those up as well. And then I just like to try and place it the best I can. You know, make sure that you're covering any anything that's going to show from between there. Right. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and do the mustache. The mustache comes in two different pieces, the front and the back, which are gonna be um, 19 and 20. So I've already sequined the mustache. And I kind of have a super, well, I guess it's not a super special way, but I have a special way that I put um, the mustache is on just to have it so it looks a little bit more like, I don't know, how it's connected, I guess. I don't like to sew on smaller pieces with a bunch of stitches only because I feel with the stitches that it takes to put them together or put sequins on, it may be a little bit too much. And there will be a lot of stitches on top of each other instead of just a couple of simple stitches. So I'm going to sew the front of the mustache onto the back of the mustache. 
I'm gonna hide my little knot end on the inside. You are not supposed to stuff them. And I'm just gonna do a quick stitch. All right, so I've attached the front to the back and my, I started it where the crease is on the bottom of the mustache. You can start it on the top, but this is just how I do it. And it says to connect it with a few small stitches. I'm just gonna even up these ends on the corners. Um, and so what I like to do is instead of doing two sm some small stitches all the way around, I like to do small stitches right in the middle. So it kind of like puffs it out a little bit, almost like butterfly wings. Um, and I just kind of feel like it looks like a little bit more of like a fun handlebar mustache. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this. You can do it however you want to. You can sew it all the way around if that's your preference. Um, you know, it really depends on how you want to do it. I just kind of like the dimension that it gives by not giving, you know, by not sewing down the ends as well. And then what I like to do, especially if it has sequins on it, I'll go up through the middle sequin just so, or the sequin closest to it, just so I can kind of like secure it down a little bit better than just with a couple of stitches. And then I'll just knot it in the back like normal. I really like how Bucilla really focuses on giving the sequence dimension, dimension in different layers. So I always try to kind of utilize the sequins uh, if I can to pin things down rather than using them with stitches only because I think that the less stitches that you can see the better. Um, but this is how he looks, and these sides aren't sewn down. He kind of looks like my father-in-law, but he's pretty cute, and it wiggles. Beep, 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 beep. So now that his mustache is on, we're going to do the eyebrows. And the eyebrows I'm pretty much going to do exactly the same. These are the eyebrows. I haven't cut them out yet, so I'll skip that part. Um, and then I'll just show you how I put the eyebrows on. I'm going to cut the four parts out, uh, put them together, the front and backs, like I did with the mustache. And then I'm going to show you how I don't even stitch them down. I'm actually going to use what I just kind of showed you. I'm going to go up through the sequins so they kind of just almost look like they're just hanging in midair. So hold tight. All right, so I have his eyebrows done which they actually kind of look like white sparkly comedians, if you ask me. Here's the other one. That's how tiny they are. So be careful, you don't lose them. So I'm gonna show you my technique on how to put these on without putting in a whole bunch of little stitches. So I normally just leave them attached. So I sew around, I'll do the sequins, I'll sew around, and then um, I'll pull it out through the back. And then I just, in the very center of where the eyebrow goes, I put my pin. And I very gently pull it up. And then you're going to fix it to how you want it to go or where you want it to go. And you can kind of pull it all kind of different directions if you want to. But I just pull it pretty tight. Move it where it needs to go. And then instead of putting my stitches in, I'm going to go up through the sequins that I already have in there. So I go through the back one and then I'll position kind of where how I want the front of the eyebrow to go and I'll go through the front one. And then that way I haven't used a bunch of stitches to put them on. It's just what I like to do. Like I said, you don't have to do it. 
Um, you can absolutely figure out your own way how you like to do it, or you can do it how the directions say. It's really all up to you. That's just kind of like how I like to do it. And then on this one, I'm going to leave it attached. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go up through the middle. And this time I'll probably do all three sequins just so I can get them all attached. So I'm going to kind of position how I want him to go, his little eyebrow. Ouch. Doesn't happen often, but when it does, man, does it hurt. So I got the middle one. I'm going to choose where I want the eyebrow to go. I'm going to go up through this one. Sometimes that happens, but it's okay. You're just going to pull very gently, and it'll go back to where it needs to go. And then down through the back, and then I'm going to do the front one. If I can get my needle through it, I will do the front one. Sometimes it's harder than you think. There we go. All right. So there's our Santa's face. He now even looks more like my father-in-law. So that's going to be pieces 21, 22, 23, and 24. So the only thing left we have to do in this tutorial video, these were actually kind of really simple ones to put together. Um, I might have to break up another video. Um, I wanted it to only be four, but I really don't want to bore you with all the details of putting all the seashells together. So. We'll see how it goes, but I might just end up putting all the fronts and backs on the sheet seashells um, and just showing you kind of how to tack them on so the video isn't 19 hours long. So we are going to do this last one, which is just putting on one of the seashells. I have to admit, I probably wouldn't have started on this one for a tutorial if I would have realized about all the seashells. <laughs> I, I really wouldn't have. I would have chosen something with a lot less steps because this one's got a lot of steps. It wouldn't be bad if it wasn't for all the shells, but that's what's making it, I think, so long. So let's cut these out. All right, here's my seashell. So I have appliqued it and then I put it through the back. Oops. Can you see it, my string? So what I do is I like sew around it and then I'll kind of like loop, loop, tie a little knot and then I actually like push it through the seam out through the back like that so it does this and then that way I can just kind of drag it where I want to go so this is going to be 26 right here and I usually go right in the middle of the number and it looks like it's kind of like hanging out this way so I did put the sequins on before and I used the coral to put the sequins on so I know it might be a little anal retentive, but I don't want to put the pink thread through it since it's got the coral thread in it. So I'm just going to put in a couple of tiny, tiny little stitches around the outside just to kind of secure it. Look at, watch, this is the best part. <laughs> I don't know why I like doing that so much. I just think it's so funny. It's like a little felt. I don't know, elevator. So I'm just putting in a couple little stitches to hold it on there. Probably one down here. 
here. I don't, oops, I don't put a lot of them in. Like I said, I don't want stitch on stitch on stitch. And there it is, that's what we did today. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but you know, if you're doing this step by step and you're like cutting the beard out and you're pleaking it, I'm sorry, you're embroidering it and then you're putting the sequins on and then you're putting it on, this probably would have taken about two hours, I think. I mean, I'm, you know, I could be slower than other people, but don't rush, you know, I mean, you don't, you don't have to get it done as fast as possible. That's kind of the lesson that I learned when I was first putting them together. It was like, okay, next, let's go, let's go. But then it's kind of like, all right, I sat down. I started to enjoy the process a little more. Um, and he's gorgeous. All right, guys. Well, I really, really appreciate you sticking around for the video. That was 14 through 26. Um, and then we're going to do, I believe... See, let me get my handy dandy bag out 27 through 50 um I really think that I'm gonna put the seashells and stuff together mostly because um it's just a lot of I don't know putting pieces together and stuffing them and as we go through the instructions I'll make sure to let you know which ones that we stuffed which ones that we didn't um I did want to show you real quick on the instructions. Uh, Bucilla, this is a new thing that Bucilla did within the past like year and a half, two years, where they actually started putting these awesome little boxes next to it. I highly recommend you use them by checking them off. Um, and it's just going to help you a lot to remember where you are, you know, within your pattern. So you're not going back and trying to figure things out or cutting out pieces you're not supposed to be. So um, I'm really excited to keep going. I can't wait. He's really starting to turn out so wonderful. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe the video. We have two more videos of this guy coming soon. And then I already have a idea of what I want to do for the next tutorial video. I know, right? But this is our work today. One more time. Woohoo! And I can't wait to continue. Uh, make sure that you have any questions, you put them down in the comment section. Um, YouTube, uh, like, please share. It really helps me out. It really helps the channel out. This kit, again, is Seashore Santa. It was purchased through Plaid Crafts. Uh, I will put the URL in the text link also. And please go on to our Instagram. It's Bucilla underscore babe 85. Like that too. Please follow me. Um, we're putting a lot of new stuff out there and we do have a great Pinterest page coming soon. So it's been fun and I can't wait to see you guys for the next video. Thanks.